So as a sort of overview of what we're going to be doing in the workshop, we're going to begin by making a color wheel. Um, so a color wheel basically, uh, actually, I think I've got one on the back of this board. So here's one I prepared earlier for <laughs> you guys to have a look at. So this is from my, my previous workshop. Um, this is basically what we're going to be making. So um, <clears throat> we've got a color wheel on the left, which is made out of the paints that I just went through. So exactly the same setup. And then on the right, the second portion of the workshop is going to be making a sort of value sphere like this. So a sphere that looks like it has form. And we're going to be making that using these paints. Um, so that's generally what we're going to be doing. So you have a reasonable idea of the workshop. It should take probably about an hour to maybe an hour and a quarter for the first section where we're doing color mixing. And then that gives us about the same length of time to work on our spheres. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is map out two circles on your canvas or your panel, whatever you're working on. Um, you can do this freehand or you could use um, like something to, for instance, I could use this uh, bottle that I've got as a little guide. So if you do have something that's going to make a reasonably large circle, you can use that as your guide or you can just freehand it. It's fine as well. I'm a bit wobbly at the bottom there. So you can make them the same size, the sphere and the, the wheel. So once you've got the outside of your wheel in place, what we then need to do is we need a central circle, which is going to be fairly small. And then another ring. So it's sort of like we're making a donut and then an outer ring sort of beyond that donut shape. And then you just want it to be as even as possible. working its way around. So it's roughly all the same sort of thickness around that central circle. Then once you've got those circles in place, you need to make three sort of divide it into thirds. Basically, if you imagine a wheel sort of from the center, we're cutting it into thirds and you can just you can eyeball this or you could measure it if you like but it doesn't have to be super neat so feel free to just sort of eyeball that and then that's going to become so if we make little shapes like this on either side of that those lines And then we can go a bit heavier over it. So these are going to become our primary, primary colors. So there's going to be this one can be our blue. This is going to be our yellow. And this is going to be our red. And this is where we're just going to be painting in our pure colors. But between these pure colors, we need three stages of mixtures. So we're going to be making a gradient from blue to red and red to yellow and yellow to blue. 
So we're going to sketch in at this stage, just three, three divisions. It doesn't matter if they're not super even. So some of mine are a little bit bigger than others. It doesn't, as I say, it doesn't have to be extremely neat. You just want to make sure you cover all your bases. So now that that's in place, I can just go a little bit heavier with those lines. So we've got blue to yellow and then one, two, three squares, then yellow to red, one, two, three squares, and then red to blue, one, two, three squares. Then in the center, we've got this final little circle and that circle doesn't need to be divided at all. The circle is going to contain an average of all of these tones. So going for a gray, basically. The outer circle is going to be pure mixtures, and then the inner circle is going to have what we call tints. So a tint is when you add white to um, to a color, um, and it sort of opens the color up to a certain extent, which we'll kind of have a look at, and we'll see a bit more as, as we go. Um, so that's all you need to do to map out your sphere, which means that you're then ready to paint. Hopefully that's nice and clear for you guys. I'll give you a moment to catch up because I know sometimes it takes a little while to um, to get these set up. Um, and I'll leave mine just up on screen for a few minutes while you while you work. I'll zoom in a bit actually as well just to keep it nice and clear. Um, for any of you who missed uh, when we first started, I did say if you have any questions, like anyone, even watch passes, even if you're not getting full workshop tuition, um, feel free to post a question using the chat um, feature. So there's a little group chat that you can ask me questions in. So anytime you have any question about what we're doing, um, we need me to kind of go back over something, feel free to ask. Um, So hopefully you're all roughly caught up. The next thing we need to do is put our paints onto the palette. So I'll zoom back out slightly. Now that I've got my circle on, I can adjust my camera to be a bit more accurate. Um, so I've got a sort of slightly larger palette with some older paints um, sort of in place, but I'm going to roughly sort of place my white, yellow, red, and blue in the same positions. I have a ten, what I tend to do is I place whites at one end, black at the other, black shifts into
So I'm going to go through the first stage of creating a transition from one primary to another primary, just using fewer, pure paints. Um, and after that, I'm going to check in with my uh, fully tutored students and see how they're getting on and you guys can catch up. So I'll get you to just watch while I'm doing this. Um, you can paint and watch if you like, if you feel confident. Um, but yeah, so you want to take sort of a reason, sort of medium sized brush, like I was talking about, um, that you're comfortable using. And we're going to begin with one of those brushes. We'll place, I'll do the blue to yellow transition is going to be my first transition. So for the moment, we're not touching any red. Working this way in this kind of limited fashion means that we're less likely to kind of complicate our mixtures with uh, like extra pigments and, and muddy them because one of the, the points of this sort of palette is that if we mix all of these together, we work towards what becomes like a gray color. Um, so I want you to just take your, take yellow and place that in that, what the block, the box that I labeled yellow, which is one third of the way along. And you might need to put a reasonable amount. It's fairly transparent lemon yellow. If you're using a, a less transparent yellow, it's probably fine. And if you find that the, the pencil kind of mixes in a bit with the paint, don't worry at the edges. That tends to happen a bit with graphite or charcoal. So that's my yellow placed. Then with my other brush, other sort of similar size brush, I'll do the same thing with blue. So pick up a bit of blue. In terms of the amount to load the brush with, um, about this much is sufficient. So you can see I've just kind of scooped it up just with the tip of the brush. And then I can place that in the blue square. If you place it like this and maybe there's not quite enough paint, just pick up a little bit more paint, not loads, just keep adding to your brush when necessary. You can sort of neaten that up to the edges. So we now have yellow and we have blue placed on the palette. What we need to do now is create a gradient between yellow and blue. And what we're aiming for is equal sort of third transitions. So the amount of difference between this yellow moving towards what's going to be a kind of yellow green towards what's going to be a mid green and then a blue green feels equal and we can make adjustments to this as we're working. So you can either take whatever brush you used for blue or for yellow. Um, I'd recommend starting with the yellow. It's a bit easier. Um, and you're going to take a little bit of paint from your pure pool of paint on the palette and then just paint it on the surface of the palette a bit. So you spread it with the brush. You can pick up a little bit more if you need spread that with the brush. And then just take a very tiny little touch of ultramarine blue and mix that into the yellow. If you feel it's not blue, it's not made much difference. Just take a little bit more blue and mix it into the yellow. Um, but if you've made something that looks sort of just slightly shifts from yellow to a greenish color, then that's probably about right. And you can place that on the canvas. And then just into that box, which is one third of the, the distance between the blue and the yellow. And what we're aiming for is a yellow that feels a bit greenish or a green that feels a bit yellow. When we talk about a greeny yellow or, or a yellow green or a blue green, um, we're referring to the hue of the color. So when we talk about hue, it's whether it's a blue or a red or a yellow, um, there are other factors to do with colors. So the whole, the whole thing is a color. Um, but at the moment, all we're really messing around with is hue. That's all that we can change. It can either be yellow or it can be blue because there's just two pigments and we're just mixing two pigments together. Things are going to get more complicated later, but for the time being, this is very simple. 
So if I add more blue, it's going to go more towards blue. If I add more yellow, it's going to go towards yellow. But in between, it's going to become greenish. So if you're reasonably happy with your, um, your kind of yellowy green, you can move into the next stage, which just means taking again a little bit more blue paint, mixing that into that green that's on your palette, placing that, and ideally sort of placing it right up to the, the edge, not blending, but just so that you can compare them. Because what we're looking for is a green that doesn't feel like a blue green, but also doesn't feel like a yellow green. And these are quite subjective terms, so they're, they're not, color's not absolute. Um, when you draw, value's quite absolute, so something's either lighter or darker. And there's not much sort of relativity, but color's very relative and sort of variable. It can be quite personal when you work in color. So I would say, my guess is that that green that I've just mixed up could maybe do with being a tiny bit more blue. Um, it's going to be hard to tell until we put the, the blue green in. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my, um, my blue brush and with the blue brush, I'm going to just grab a touch of yellow. So I'm doing the opposite and I just want to add enough yellow that this no longer feels like a blue and I'm going to need a reasonable amount of yellow. And the reason for this is different paints have different tinting strengths. So when you mix them together, one paint will tend to be dominant, more dominant than the, than the other. Sometimes paints match, um, but very often you'll have a paint that has a higher tinting strength, one paint that has a higher tinting strength than the other. Um, and in this case, the ultramarine blue has a much higher tinting strength than yellow. So I need quite a lot of yellow to kind of balance out the, um, the blue in order to shift it from that blue color. Whereas when we were mixing the yellow, I just needed kind of tiny little touches of uh, blue to make the yellow more green. So keep adding yellow to that mixture until it feels more like a blue green rather than just a blue. Then depending on how stiff the paint is, you can, you can always take a little dab of medium just to kind of thin the paint out slightly. That makes it easier to spread. So when paint comes straight out of a tube, it's quite thick and it can be difficult to spread. So the medium is there to help us spread paint. So it kind of goes further. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're always going to be shifting around quite thick um, wads of paint, particularly when you're in colder climates or when the weather's colder. So at the moment here in the UK, it's, it's pretty nice weather. Um, so the paints are all reasonably uh, liquid, but as it starts to get colder, paints get a bit stiffer. And you notice this a lot if you paint outdoors. So I've got my blue green in now. So at this stage, I need to have a look at those transitions and see if I feel like the transitions are even. So I think this two feels too similar to the three and it feels very different to the number one in these transitions. So the, this middle green seems too yellow um, and it could go bluer so that there's more of a difference between these two and less of a difference between these two. And that's what we're adjusting. So to make that change, I can grab a little bit of that number, that sort of green blue mixture and just paint that into what's already on the surface. So one nice thing about oil paint is you can adjust paint. You can adjust your colors on the surface of the painting. You don't have to kind of always work over the top with new paint. So you're not always mixing brand new mixtures. You can just adjust what's, what's on the, the painting directly. And you can keep adjusting back and forth by either adding yellow. So maybe I want to go back, add a little bit more yellow back into that. Maybe just a touch more. 
and it's sort of just it's sort of swinging it back and forth between being more of a blue green or more of a yellow green and that's pretty good so i'm a lot happier with that now i was reasonably happy with the other two So they don't need to be changed too much, but that middle one needed to be adjusted back and forth. Um, but that's that's the process for creating these transitions. So that's what we're going to do all the way around this circle. Um, but first, so I won't get you to carry on just yet. I'll just leave you to kind of create work on these transitions. If you finish quickly, just kind of keep keep working on them. Um, but I'm just going to check in with my tutored students. So it'll be maybe a few minutes and I'll be back. My video will go off um, when I do that. So hopefully you've kind of followed well enough that you can you can work on your own. Um, but yeah, I'll be I'll be back in a moment and leave you to keep working on that for the time being. Just gonna pin my video. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a transition from, and it doesn't actually much matter which one that you do, but a transition from blue to red um, or red to yellow, which means um, you want to either use clean brushes or um, clean your brushes that you've been using. So I'm going to clean the ones that I've got. They shouldn't be too messy from the previous stage. You want to get them as clean as possible so they're not adding any of that third color into these mixtures. And this sort of process we're going to follow for this section is going to be the same as what we did for um, the last the last color transition. So I'm going to do blue to red, um, but as I say, you can do red to yellow um, or blue to red. So we'll do the same thing. So I'm going to take some pure red to begin with, and I'll pop that in that little box that we've got. Um, mine's like a Indian red that I'm using the, yeah, I've got a little bit of cadmium on my palette, but the one I'm painting with is the, the Indian red. Um, so yeah, I've got your cadmium red painted in and then we're going to do exactly the same thing. So just creating, oh, um, I'm using, I was just using my medium, um, which is odorless mineral spirits to clean my brushes. Um, you could use a different, if you want to keep your medium really clean, you could use a different jar, but I don't find it tends to, um, cause too much trouble if you're, if you just kind of use what you have available to clean. <clears throat> um, but you can use oils as well. So oils also clean brushes. Um, usually to clean with oils, you need to kind of wipe it out. You don't want to leave brushes with cleaned with oils, um, without washing them with some soap, but if you were working at working with oils at the moment and you don't have any mineral spirits to clean, um, you can use your oil medium to clean your brushes. But the main thing is that you just kind of use the oil or the, the mineral spirits to just sort of flush the, the paint out of the brush. And then you can use your, your towel, um, your kind of cleaning rag or your paper towel to, to get rid of any of the excess or squeeze it out. So, We've got the, the red in place now. So I'll do the same thing that I did with the blue, which is pop a bit of red onto the palette, then add a touch of blue to it. And you'll notice, you might notice if you've got a different red, the red is a like this 
uh, Indian red I'm using is a lot higher tinting, tinting strength than um, the yellow. So I need more blue mixed into it to, to shift it. But what we're looking for is it's going to be a sort of warmish purple. So it's a purple that tends towards like a reddish purple rather than a, a bluey purple. So it's the same principle where just I'm going to use a little bit of paint to help the flow of that. It's a bit stiffer. So I'm going to pop that next to my, my red. neaten up that edge and then add a lot more blue to try to get a neutral purple and again it's going to be similar to the previous section where um, we're not necessarily going to find it really easy to be sure of what the mid purple is until we've got both the red purple and the blue purple painted in I'm just going to see if I can lighten my, my video a bit because it's gone quite dark. That's slightly better, I think, hopefully for you guys. And then finally, we want a lot of blue mixed in, and that's going to be our our blue purple. And then you just make any adjustments that you need, whether you need to make your mid purple a bit bluer or a bit more red. You can kind of pull and push it backwards and forwards with the paint. You either add more blue or add more red until it feels like it sort of clicks in place. Um, if you're using something like a, a Venetian red like I am, you'll probably find that the these purple mixtures go quite dark. Um, but what we're going to be doing in the next stage is creating uh, tints, which is adding some white to these paints. When we create tints of these darker purples and blues, um, it'll be a lot clearer what's going on with them. So when you've completed that, you can then move down and create your, well, whatever you're working on. So I'll be making my red to yellow transition. Um, but if you're working on a, a different color, you just swap and basically you're just, you're finishing out that outer circle with your transitions. So I'm going to take a bit of yellow. Add a touch of red to that. You're not going to need, depending on the tinting strength, I'm not going to need too much red added to the yellow. It's going to be a lot clearer these colors just because they're a lot lighter so we can already sort of see what they are. We're going for a sort of warm, well, a yellow orange.
I'm running a bit low on my, my uh, yellow, so I'm going to add a bit of yellow. As I say, if you ever need to top up your paints, feel free to. So I'm reasonably happy with those, that transition from red to yellow now, which pretty much completes my, my circle, that outer circle. And the next thing we're going to do is make tints of these colors. 